spinner baits in the fall will catch you a lot of fish and they'll catch you some big fish. Here's how I do it. Hey, what's up everybody? Ryan here with Fish North Georgia and today it is October, the 1st of October and we have a major, first really major cold front coming in in the part of the year. Um, thank God, it's about time. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about something that I'm gonna be telling you all about how I like to throw spinner baits in the fall. What conditions, what kind of combinations and what kind of colors and what weights. Um, it, it, spinner baits are fish catching machines, not just in the spring, but in the fall and in the early stages of the winter as well. Fish are feeding on bait fish. We all know that. We as bass fishermen, we all know in the fall they're gorging on bait fish. That's what they want to do. Um, they're getting ready to start fattening up. They've come out of their summertime haunts that they're uh, hanging out in, whether it may be offshore, you know, whatever, all brush, deep creek channel areas, timber, whatever it is. So a lot of these fish are pulling up and they're pulling up closer to the bank and they're gonna start hunting for bait fish, specifically little bitty bait fish. That's what they really, really, really like to gorge in. And one of my favorite things to really hunt for those fish and to catch those fish with is a spinnerbait. Spinnerbaits are, they're a dime a dozen. There's tons of them, but there are several features in several of them that I exclusively throw. First one that I like to throw, a mini me from Spot Sticker Baits. The mini me from Spot Sticker Baits is probably one of my most favorite spinner baits in the fall, early winter to throw. They have the hidden weight, um, they have a real good skirt pattern, real good painted style, but the biggest thing with the mini me's, and these are just painted blades, just for example, but they have these little bitty razor blades, okay? And you can see the painted blade here. I have it for you guys so you can see that the painted blades are small. This is like a little number three painted blade, but they've got threes. Um, sometimes, sometimes, you know, they even have like two and a halfs on there. They got little bitty blades, three and a halfs. They're smaller. You really, they really, the bass really start kind of feeding on these smaller bait fish in the fall. We all know that. Threadfin shad, little bitty blueback heron, smaller gizzard shad, um, wherever like it may be, they like to gorge on themselves, but they'll get in these wolf packs and they will cruise the banks. They will cruise rocky banks. They will cruise all the way into the backs of pockets and creeks. Um, they're just looking to feed. That's all that they're doing. These fish that hang out in these wolf packs though, they are your tournament winning fish. They are your trophy size winning fish. Um, they are the fish that you really want to go catch, whether you're fishing a tournament, fun fishing, going out, having a good time. These are the fish that you want to catch. Their fish are bigger, the fish are more aggressive, and they are really more apt to want to chase something. And spinner baits are probably one of my favorite things to do to throw at these fish. I like to throw other things, but specifically today, we're talking about spinner baits. Now, the spot sticker mini me, you can throw it a long ways. You can, you know, it, it, like I said earlier, they have really good colors, great blade combinations. But the biggest thing is the blade combination for me when they're really feeding on the little bait fish. The other big ticket with a spot sticker mini me is your ability to really burn that spinner bait. You can pick that spinner bait up and give it a much faster retrieve than you can with say another spinner bait similar to like this one right here that has bigger style blades on it. You can't burn this one as fast as you can a mini me. Uh, another good one right behind the mini me that I will throw is a Georgia Blade Ultra Vibe Spinner Bait with the Ultra Vibe Blade. Um, they have a different pulsation to them because of the way that the blade is made. So it kind of gives them, the fish, a little bit different of a feel in terms of their lateral line with that Ultra Vibe Spinner Bait Blade. A lot of guys like to throw them. 
a lot of guys like to just get the blades from Georgia Blade and they make their own spinner baits and they'll put the Ultra Vibe spinner bait blades on the top. Um, you know, that's all fine and well. If you like to make your own stuff, then that's fantastic. You can take a lot of pride and, and, you know, I make my own stuff too. And being able to catch a fish on something that you made yourself is, is really gives you like this a plus feeling of you know hey i made this bait i tricked a fish into biting my bait so a good close second one is the georgia blade ultra vibe spinner bait um or with specifically with that ultra vibe blade in there um sticking with the same thing though i like the heavier blade style or i like the heavier weight styles um having the you know anything pretty much primarily that i'm going to be throwing for the most part and this is for the most part I'm going to be throwing half ounce or hot heavier, um, half ounce, three quarter. The reason why is because I'm covering a lot of water and in the fall, you know, we tend to have these windier days that start picking up. We get, you know, fronts come in and out. We've got cooling off and, and all of us know when we get these cooler fronts coming through, wind is always associated with them. So, you know, lots of guys will reach for jerk baits, and I do too, but spinner baits are number one. I will throw a spinner bait from the get go, okay? And that is just the way that I have had success over the past several years doing that in the fall, especially in stainer water conditions. Now, you can, of course, throw a spinner bait in clear water and it will perfectly work just fine don't shy away from the fact that you got all this flash you got this skirt and this metal arm that doesn't matter they want to feed and they're going to chase a spinner bait they will chase a spinner bait so the third favorite one that i like to throw the most and this is pretty much my third and final one is a war eagle I like the War Eagle spinner baits because just let's just face it, the War Eagle wires are thinner. They put out a lot of vibration. But the big thing with the War Eagles is most of the War Eagles that you're going to find, not all of them, they have bigger blade styles similar to this one right here. They have much bigger blades compared to like this one right here, like we're talking about with the Mini Me style spinner baits, is a considerable difference in size there. If you find bait fish that are, say, bigger thread fin, bigger herring, bigger gizzard chad, that they're still feeding on, they're not the huge ones, but they're a little bit bigger, the bigger blade spinner baits will work better than the smaller blade spinner baits like the Georgia Blade Ultra Vibe and the Spot Sticker Mini Me spinner baits. The War Eagles. You cannot burn them as fast. The only one that you can burn faster is that Screaming Eagle, and it's a fantastic spinner bait, but it has a little bit of the thinner razor razor blade style blades, just like on the Mini Me, just like on the Ultra Vibe from Georgia Blade. But I prefer, if I'm gonna throw a smaller blade, one I like to throw the Mini Me or the Georgia Blade before I pick up the Screaming Eagle. The War Eagles, are great for me around cover um they are pretty weedless especially like you know we get some of these days where maybe the fish will start hanging out in the blowdowns for example um laydowns whatnot wood structure beside docks the war eagle is one that i will pick up and throw if i'm fishing rocky points the backs of pockets rocky swing banks any of those typical places where the bass should be moving, where the bait fish are going and they should be looking to feed, I will pick up the smaller spinnerbait style. So don't let conditions make you not want to throw a spinnerbait. If you get up one morning and head to the lake and it's 43 degrees and the wind is blowing, that is spinnerbait weather to me. That is where I have a lot more success with the spinnerbait especially when we have days where the air temperatures are in the low 40s first thing in the morning but the water temperatures the surface temperatures are in the low 70s creeping down into the upper 60s on down to the mid 60s they want to feed you gotta remember 
that in that mid upper 60s to mid 70 degree range that is when bass have their highest metabolism they've got to feed they want to feed also you know in the mid upper 60s to the mid 70s low 70s range that's when the fish will jump the most they'll pull the hardest that's just that's just the way mother nature made uh, all the species of bass that's how they function but a couple of things with spinnerbait fishing in terms of the rest of the setups with them always look for one that you know there's some of them that are made this way that they have a trailer hook on the back okay i don't have a trailer hook with me right here but i will run a trailer hook a free swinging trailer hook okay so i will actually put a hook on right here and then i will put the keeper on the plastic little rubber keeper whatever it may be um gamagatsu makes some vmc um there's several other companies that make them strike king even makes some that you can buy um they have the little rubber pieces in the package or around the hook you can put them on your spinner bait i always run a trailer hook with one because i can't tell you how many times with a spinner bait i would not have got a fish in the boat if it had not been for a trailer hook okay you get into the argument of whether or not to use a trailer hook, you know, that's fine, whatever your personal preference is. Me personally, talking to you guys, I catch more and feel better about having that trailer hook on the back of it. I will typically run either a two watt or a three haul. I know that's a big, big, big trailer hook, but I, I really, really, really love running the bigger ones just because I've caught so many where they've just been hooked just right outside the mouth or something and they don't even have the main hook because they've come up and they have swatted at it trying to feed on it and they've missed the main part of the body of the spinner bait but they get that trailer hook and you get that fish in the boat in terms of trailers for them actual soft plastic trailers you can throw kitex you can throw zoom spinnerbait trailers my personal favorite one that i like to put on the back of of uh, like war eagles and spinnerbaits like this one right here with the keeper is a bass pro shops cajun trailer it is for some reason it's just my favorite one i absolutely love that trailer i like glimmer blue and i like the sh the white with the chartreuse tips those are the two that i primarily use but um but the zooms the zoom ones are pretty good too um and then of course you can put a little bit of super glue you know down around this keeper right here and you can thread like a 3.3 or a 2.8 kitek on the back of it to give it a little bit of bulk the reason why i want a trailer a soft plastic trailer on the back is because i feel like in my mind there's a little bit of something for them to hone in on when they get closer to that spinner bait to bite it they see that little grub, thick grub back there. They see that swimming tail, whatever it may be. They will hone in on that. And I feel like personally, I will get them to actually eat the bait a little bit better than if I was just throwing this thing straight with just a trailer hook on the back of it. The mini me's, you can't really put a trailer on the back of them because of the hidden weight style. They have that big bulky hidden weight that goes back to them. But the thing about the mini me is compared to where you really don't have to have a trailer on them is because you can really hum a mini me through the water there and you're pretty much with a mini me you're you're inducing one of two things you're inducing a reaction strike or you're inducing a feeding reaction strike they're kind of the same thing but when you're throwing a spinnerbait you're looking for fish that want to feed especially in the fall which is kind of the opposite of the spring when you throw spinner baits you're kind of trying to get you know one of those big females that's going in the backs of those pockets or whatever to spawn she's looking for a big meal or you throw it near one that's pulling up to spawn and that big spinner bait comes 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 vibrating through and they just they don't have hands so they have to get it and that's that's where you get a lot of your bites in the spring but that's the difference between the spring and the fall as far as rod and reels is concerned in line, I throw mine on a six foot 10 medium heavy rod with a fast action. Now I have a custom spinnerbait rod made by Kevin Underwood with Lipsticker. He made me a rod a couple years ago, specifically the way that I wanted it. So shout out to him. Uh, he makes a great rod. 
that rod is specifically for, for me. If you don't go with a 610, I prefer 610 because I can throw it closer to, I have more accuracy throwing it around cover. If I need to flip it beside a dock, I need to throw it over here in this blowdown. Um, you know, I can still have the shorter accuracy of placing the spinnerbait exactly where I want it. There's nothing wrong with seven footers. I do not suggest going much over seven foot though. I know there's kind of a fad that's been going on for the past couple of years about throwing longer rods. I know I've seen some recently by a specific company that they make a seven foot three one. I don't throw a seven foot three one. That's too much rod out there. You will actually lose fish with a really long rod with a spinner bait because you really need to, when they get this thing, you really need to punch them and hit them right in the mouth with this thing and really bury that hook, hook home. The longer rods are better for in terms of moving baits, you know, as long as you get longer in the rod, your tips get a lot softer. And yes, you can feel the vibration of the blades better, but you will lose fish with the longer rod, especially when they get closer to the boat and you're trying to get a net underneath them. So not trying to tell you which one that you don't need to throw that, but that is just my personal preference. I keep it 6'10 to seven foot medium heavy. Real, I pretty much throw everything on a seven three to one gear ratio. Abu Garcia reel, um, that is where I stay. Um, seven three to one is a good gear where you can speed it up or you can slow it down when necessary. And then I never throw a spinner bed on anything under 15 pound fluorocarbon, straight fluorocarbon. I don't mess around with the braid to leader. I throw 15 to 17 pound fluorocarbon. If you're fishing around grass or anything like that, there's absolutely nothing wrong with throwing 20 pound fluorocarbon. I like Sunline FC Sniper in the uh, 17 pound or the 16 pound range, excuse me. Um, that's the one that I got on my re uh, reel right now. On, that's laying on the deck of my boat. Is got 17 or 16 pound uh, FC Sniper, and um, it is a good line. I really like that line. Um, it ties a good knot, which, when in terms of spinnerbait fishing, you need to tie a really good knot. Always inspect your line when you're spinnerbait fishing. The one thing about spinnerbait fishing in the fall is you never know when that giant's going to bite. Whether it be a big old spotted bass or a big large mouth or maybe even if you're fishing up in Tennessee, the big small mouth might bite. They might come out and grab a spinnerbait. Spinnerbaits induce big bites. They catch big quality fish and uh, typically if you catch a limit of fish on a spinnerbait, if you can call up the rest of the day in a tournament situation, then you've had one hell of a day. Let's just be honest about it. So, um, I that's that's the biggest thing for me um, in terms of spinnerbait fishing in the fall. Um, like I said, we're going to be looking for rocky points, wind blown rocky points, rocky banks, um, anywhere visibly using my eyes that I can find that you know. There's nothing wrong when you're spinnerbait fishing with say, there should be a fish there. In the fall, generally there is, especially like on Rip Rap Point, a uh, hard rocky point going into the mouth of a major creek. Typically there is a fish there. The wind's blowing a little bit or blowing pretty hard, throw a spinnerbait. Good probability that they'll chase it and they'll eat it. So. Spinnerbait fishing is fun. It is a good tool to use in the fall. Seems to be one that gets overlooked a little bit in the fall, but I'm telling you right now, spinnerbait has put a lot of fish in the boat for me in the fall, and it'll put a lot of fish in the boat for you. So good luck out there, and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more just like this.